It is so good to have all of our campuses joining us right now all across Tampa Bay, and I want to welcome all of them. And Radiant, I, I just want to tell you this, starting out the new year, I am so honored to be your pastor. So honored. Like, like, I know so many times on Sundays I get up here and I greet all the guests, and I'm so glad our guests are with us. But let me just talk to my church family for a second and just say, I'm glad you're in the room. I'm glad you're at church. I'm glad you're here today. You mean a lot to Katie and I. We, we, we were just, we pray for you all the time. We love you. And I'm just so honored to be your pastor. So Radiant, love you guys so much. All right. And happy new year. Y'all glad to be here? Happy new year. It's going to be a great new year. I think it's going to be our best year we've ever had yet. And so uh, I'm just pumped that you're with us. Hey, take out those notes you got. We are in a brand new series we're starting today called Pray First. Pray First. And what we are doing is we are looking at what it means to be a person that goes to God in prayer and sees breakthrough in our life. And really we talk about all things when it comes to prayer. Prayer is really one of the most widely accepted practices in all of Christianity, but it's also one of the least applied practices in all of Christianity. Prayer is way easier to to preach than it is to actually do. And so I, I want to encourage you in here today when it comes to your prayer life to take it to the next level. Let me, let me just do a little bit of evaluation of all of our campuses today. How many in here at one of our campuses would say, you know what, Aaron, I pray too much. Come on, throw your hand up. Anybody? All right, all right, all right. No, nobody, nobody. We're an honest church right in here. All right, let's, let's be a little bit uh, more vulnerable in here. How many would say there are moments that you want to pray, you just don't know exactly what to pray? Come on, anybody? All right, that's, that's a majority. How many would say that, you know what, there's many times you're like, you kind of even feel a little ashamed or maybe even a little frustrated at the current state of your prayer life? Anybody? Come on, across there. Okay, that would be a lot of us. All right, we've all had those moments where it just doesn't come easy for us. And over the next 21 days, as we launch 21 days of prayer and fasting, and we do this series, I'm gonna help you get your prayer life to the next level because prayer is the most powerful tool that we have as believers and I'm gonna tell you how to do it well. I have had those moments where, where I wanna do it really good. I've had these moments, especially in seasons of prayer and fasting where, where I'm there and I'm going, this is it. I'm gonna, it's gonna be an hour long. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna go after God. And I'll like get on, you know, I'll set the, the atmosphere. I'll light the candle. I'm all excited. I'm like ready to go. I'll get on my knees because I'm real spiritual. I'm ready to go. And I'll get on my knees and I'm like, God, I'm just going after you and I'm praying and I'm seeking God and I'm, I'm giving him my all. And then I start praying over my prayer list. And I'm praying over you, praying over my kids. And, and then I'm believing God for the future. And I'm so excited. I'm like, okay, it's had to have been an hour. And I look down and it's been like 38 seconds. Anybody done that? It's just like, we gotta figure out how to do prayer well. So today, I'm gonna start this series off by kicking off our 21 days of prayer and fasting with a message I've titled, The Powerful Combination of Prayer and Fasting. The Powerful Combination of Prayer and fasting. I'm going to break down these two kind of ideas, prayer and fasting, and show you the combination between the two and how powerful it really is if you'll learn how to pray and fast. And they go together. It's like every Batman has a Robin, every Jordan has a Pippin, every Mario has a Luigi, every Aaron has a Katie. Come on, somebody. You got to have it in your life. So in the same way, prayer comes along with fasting and there's major breakthrough that can happen in your life. And what I'm believing is that 21 days from now, as we close out this, 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 this 21 days of prayer and fasting, that the very miracles you've been believing for can come about in your life. Maybe, just maybe, that that child's gonna come back to the faith. Maybe, just maybe, there'll be a healing in your body. You meet that guy or that girl you've been believing for. You get a business idea, it pops into your mind your calling becomes clear. Things happen when we pray and when we fast. I looked at it when it comes to my life that it was during prayer and fasting as a senior in high school, I prayed and fasted and God showed me what college I was to go to. It was during a season of prayer and fasting that God confirmed my calling to be a missionary. I had got an opportunity to go overseas and take a job as a full-time missionary. Before I said yes, I prayed and I fasted. It was during a season of 21 days of prayer and fasting that God spoke to me while I was a youth pastor up in Pensacola, and God told me that Katie was going to be my wife. We weren't even like hanging out at that time. So then I went and talked to her, and I said, hey, I just want you to know, I've prayed, I fasted, God said, you're my wife. 
And she's like, well, I'm gonna need to pray and fast. She didn't take 21 days, she took 30 days. Cause she was like, I'm gonna really make sure I hear. And God spoke to her, thank God. Prayer and fasting changes things. It was during, tw- uh, during prayer and fasting, 2012, January, a prayer and fasting season, God spoke to me and said, this is be your last year as a youth pastor and you're gonna be used to start a church. It was, 20, it was during prayer and fasting, God confirmed what, God, what he's doing here at, in Tampa. When we launched um, the church, before we launched it in September of 2013, our whole launch team went through a season of prayer and fasting to prepare for what God's gonna do. It was during, during every January of prayer and fasting since we launched the church, we've had a season of going after God and it's remarkable how many miracles happen in January, especially at the end of January when God's people pray and fast. There's a combination that can bring power in your life. So I'm gonna help break it down to you today that I think will be very clear and it'll be such uh, an enticing desire that comes into your life to go, you know, I'm gonna go to the next level spiritually when it comes to praying and fasting. So if you're with me, I want you to open your Bibles today to to Matthew chapter six. I wanna look, Jesus is talking at the Sermon of the Mount, probably the most famous sermon in the Bible And in it, he gives us three spiritual disciplines. The one is the discipline of prayer, one is the discipline of fasting, and one is the discipline of giving. I'm not gonna talk to you about giving today, but I am gonna talk to you about prayer and fasting. Look what he says, Matthew chapter six, we're in verse five. When you pray, just pause right there and look at those words. Notice it was not this idea of if you pray. Jesus starts the message out and says, when you pray, I'm assuming as a Christian that you're gonna pray. And God expects us to pray. He says, when you pray, and then look what he breaks it down. He says, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners or to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Let me encourage some people here today because one of the great barriers of prayer is that nothing happens during that time. And I want you to be very assured today that God is with you in your moments of prayer. When you're praying, it's not words that are wasted, but every single word God hears and it makes a difference. Prayer changes things. And I I, I think we should be assured of it today that when we as believers pray, things are happening. The issue with prayer is that many of us think of God as a spiritual vending machine that we go through, go to, and we give them, you know, our little bit of time or a little bit of money, and we go, now God, we need you to do this for us. Listen, prayer is not a transactionary moment where we go to God with our needs and we get the reward and we get the request granted and then we move on with our regular life. No, prayer is a lifestyle of connecting with God. Here's the purpose of prayer, and I want you to write it down. The purpose of prayer is connection with God. The purpose of prayer is not for you to get your needs met. It's not even for you to go to the next level when it comes to spiritually or influence in your life. The purpose of prayer is for you to live out what you were created to do, which is to be with God. You gotta think about this, as Christians, we have access to the God of the universe, and it is through prayer that we are able to connect and commune with God in a real way. It's why you were created. So you'll stop praying if you think prayer is about getting requests made in your life, because you leave the prayer and you go, well, God didn't answer that, I ain't praying anymore. And you've missed out on the whole purpose. You see, the purpose of prayer is for you to actually connect with the God of the universe, building a relationship with him. You gotta think about this. Adam and Eve, very first um, humans were created, and they were created, and it kind of gave us a picture of what we were called to do. The Bible tells us that they would walk and talk with God. Genesis chapter three, it says, in the cool of the day, God would come down and Adam and Eve would walk with them. You gotta think about this beautiful picture. Adam and Eve, there, walking and communing with God. What did they talk to God about? Imagine that. 
What did they talk to God? If they had the prayer life you have, what would that conversation be like? You gotta think Adam and Eve had no request to be made. They had, they had no moments to their, present their request to God. You gotta think they had no kids. They, didn't, they don't have any problems in their life right there. No in-laws. They have no neighbors that they're fighting with. They have no coworkers that they're angry at. They had no stress. They had no sickness. They have no financial need. Adam and Eve had no problem, yet they had connection in prayer with God. Amen. Why? Because they understood why they were created. God was not the genie to give them what they wanted. They understood that prayer was not about getting something from God. Prayer was about being with God. I wonder if you can switch your perspective over this next month from your prayer life being a list that you present to God to now being going, here's time I'm setting apart just to be with you, God, just to connect with you. Look how Jesus prayed it. You gotta think, why did Jesus pray? He had no needs. He's God in the flesh. Yet, we have seven instances in the scriptures where, God, where Jesus pulls away to be with the Father. Why? He showed us that it was not about getting what you want. It's about being with the one you should be with. It's about the relationship with him. He was in relationship with the Father. And look what he said, John 17. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray for also those who believe in me through their message. He's talking about you. And he says that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I'm in you. Like since we have this relationship, my prayer is that they have this relationship. May they also be in us so that the world may believe you have sent me. What is he saying? He's saying the purpose of prayer is that they would be in us, that we would be together, that we'd be doing life and relationship together. Hear me out, Radiant. The purpose of prayer isn't about you informing God, but about you experiencing intimacy with God. I want this month for you to know God in a real and deep way. I, I watched, a, I listened to a message the other day by Mother Teresa on prayer. Mother Teresa said it this way, the fruit of prayer is the joy of knowing Jesus. It's not about getting something from God. It's about being with God. So I'm gonna show you how to do it over this next month. And that's why we're doing 21 days of prayer and fasting because I wanna show you how to be with God, how to commune with God. That's why we're doing a brand new thing. We've never done this before called Upper Zoom. Upper Zoom is we're going back to 2020 where the Zoom, some of y'all deleted the app already. All right, get it back. We're gonna be on Zoom at 6 a.m. I'm, I'm gonna be leading these. I'm gonna be with you on Zoom at 6 a.m. And we're, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to connect with God relationally in prayer. And so what we're gonna do, if you wanna find the link every day, it's a new link every single day because we're not re-recording them. We're not, we're not putting them out. So it's just live Zoom calls every day. That's why we're calling it the upper Zoom, little play on words there. And, and the whole goal is that we just help you connect with God relationally. So you'll go to our website every single day, or you can go to Instagram or wherever it is, and you'll see the link there in the morning. Click on it. The link will open up about five minutes before, and then we'll connect together. I'm going to show you how to be with God in prayer. So why do we do it? We learn how to connect with God. And Radiant, if you can learn this, you can learn the connection, the knowing God, just enjoying God. And some of y'all, it might start like a minute. Be okay with that. Be okay with that. You don't have to hit some like superstar status of like, man, I can pray an hour. Like that's what he's saying. He's like, don't be like the hypocrites that walk around like, look how great my prayer life is. <laughs> I'd rather go up to you and go, how was your prayer time? You're like, Aaron, I got to 90 seconds of time with God and it was amazing. That, that's, that's what he's saying in this passage. He's saying, you know what? When you pray, just go to your room, close the door, kick those kids out. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all need to learn how to close the door on this. Just, like, just like, like turn it off for just a minute or two and just go, okay, God, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. Because the promise happens, the promise happens of prayer is that God's will being accomplished through God's people. 
So when you pray and you get with God, you start to care about and you start to hear what he's caring about and you got start to live out and go, oh, this is what you want to get done. Many of you don't know God's will because you don't spend time with God. So you get in God's presence and you start spending time with him. And what does he do? He lets his will be done in your life. That's why the prayer of the Lord's prayer, which is the next passage, which I'm not gonna teach you today. Next Sunday, I'm gonna give you a breakdown of the Lord's prayer that's gonna transform your whole prayer game. You need to be here, it's gonna be awesome. But he says it this way, while you're praying, he goes, you pray your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. What is he saying? He said, when you're praying, you're getting God's heart and then you pray God's will be done on earth. So when that marriage is messed up, it's in that time that you're connecting with God going, God, you can restore my marriage. God, you can bring that child back to the faith. God, I'm believing you that you're gonna see this business grow so that we can be a blessing to the world around us. It's in prayer that you're able to see heaven come to earth, things that are out of God's will come in alignment with God's will. Like, like, if you'll miss, you'll miss it if you think your prayer is just you're reciting stuff to God that really doesn't mean anything. Your prayer is powerful. Yeah. It's very, very, very powerful. St. Augustine says it this way, and it's kind of a controversial phrase, but I think it's something to live by when it comes to prayer. He says, without God, we cannot. But without God, without, I'm sorry, without us, God will not. Let me say it again. Without God, we cannot. Come on, how many know we're helpless without him? But without us, God will not. Like, like, like God wants to see this region transformed by the gospel, but he's looking for people to use. He wants to see your marriage healthy. He wants to see your kids come back to the faith. He wants to see you in a God-honoring relationship. How does he make it happen? He makes it happen through the prayers of his people. Uh, John Wesley said it this way. He, he said, um, nothing happens on earth today except for, through an answer of prayer. Like God does nothing except through prayer. Now, now that's an extreme statement, but I would hold to it and go, that's how important our prayers are. And let me remind you that your prayers have unbelievable power. Your prayers are very effective. This is your reminder. The prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. Your prayers have power. So when you're sick, pray. When you're lonely, pray. When you're broke, pray pray. When you're desperate, pray. When you're in need, pray. When you're bitter, pray. When you're angry, pray. When you don't understand, pray. When the world's falling apart, pray. When you connect, want to connect with God, pray. Let the intensity of your prayers match the intensity of your problem and watch how God will move through your life. Prayer matters. That's why Jesus said it this way. Again, I tell you, that if two are, are on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. That's why we have our pray first moments on the, every, the first Sunday of every month, because we're agreeing together, connecting with God, and through that connecting with God, miracles happen in our life. So I, I want you to think of what, what happens when we connect with God. I, I, I want to just... I wanna bait you with this because I want you to just go, there's many times over this next month, your friends are gonna to ask to hang out and you're gonna go, I want to, I just gotta go connect with God. I just gotta go connect with God. This is, uh, this is my month of consecration. I'm learning how to connect with God. Because through prayer, God, and I want you to write it down, God connects with us. So we, that's why we have that intimacy, that connection with him. You get to know him in a great way. It's through prayer that God meets our needs. So he doesn't leave you there in your issues. It's through prayer during that time, God will meet your needs. It's through prayer that God comforts us. So many of you are, are distraught and you're so frustrated. Go to God in prayer. That's why we wear those bracelets. And he goes, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated. I need comfort. Where do I find it? I find it in God's presence. I find it when I pull in, um, get close to him. Through prayer, look at it, God strengthens us. I love the story of David when he's surrounded by the enemy. And the Bible says, and David strengthened himself in the Lord. Yes. You know what he did? He prayed. He spent time with God. When your time with God, you come in and you feel all frustrated. You walk out, you're as bold as a lion. Why? Because I spent time with the creator of the universe. Yes. Here's, a, here's another one. God guides you. God guides us when we pray. What is he doing? He gives us direction. It's in prayer. As you're abiding with him that he's saying, okay, don't take that deal. Don't go on a date with that person. Come on, don't respond to that text message that way. He's guiding your life. 
He'll keep you out of a lot of issues. Here's the next one. God convicts us. He, the highlight, the, the spotlight of the Holy Spirit comes in our life. And he's saying, hey, hey, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have responded that way. He's not doing it to shame you. He's doing it to change you, to conform you to the image of Christ. Here, let me keep going. God, God cleanses us. What is he doing? He's washing us clean. It's in that moment that we can confess our sins. I'm going to show you how tomorrow. I'm going to give you a real clear outline of how I do it and how, how you can walk it out in your life. He, but you need a moment of confession. Confession is good for your soul. He says if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So he cleanses us and he heals us. Aren't you thankful that we're, we serve a God that in his presence we find healing, both of our mind, our emotions, our relationships, our body? It's in prayer that God helps us understand his word. <laughs> I don't know about you, I've tried to read my Bible in my own flesh, it doesn't work. I get to some of those places in the Old Testament, I'm like, what does this mean? <laughs> so that's why I pray, I spend time with God before, and then he helps me understand his word. It also, God shields us against anxiety and worry. When you're praying, it's like he put a shield around you, why? Because now you're focused on his presence instead of the world's problems. Here's what else happens. When you pray, God fills us with his spirit. And it's so crazy. Somehow at salvation, we got his presence, yet every day we need more and more of his presence. And you get it more and more. We get continually filled, and we say, God, consume all of me. It happens in prayer. God gives us assignments in prayer. Like it's in prayer, he's gonna say, reach out to that person or pray for that person at your, co or your work or give some money to those, those people. It's in those moments God gives us assignments. It's crazy to me how many campuses we've launched just because in a moment of prayer, God said, go into that community. He gives us assignments. And here's the last one, it's God impacts the world through prayer. <laughs> I want you to hear it this way. I'm gonna leave this list up there for a second because some of y'all are like on like the fourth one and you're still writing but I want you to understand this. If you knew what was possible for you to connect with God, you'd connect with God more. Amen. If you knew that out of that connection with God, it would no longer be a guilt-driven thing. It's going, of course I wanna be with God. This is possible. I get to know him. And through knowing him, I get to see the world impacted around me. But look at that last one. That last one's so amazing. Because people, let me tell you this way. People might unfollow you from social media. They might ignore your email. They might, you know, ignore your phone call. They might not read your text message, but they're defenseless against your prayers. Like, like, like I'm telling you, some, your haters, they, they can't deal with your prayers. And when we go to God, we can pray and things happen on the world today. That's how powerful our prayers are. So he, he gives us his perspective. He says, listen, when you pray, this happens. It, it's so much connection and happens when you pray. But then he doesn't end it with that. Go to verse 16. And I'm going to be quick in this, but I want to show you because it's not just prayer. He goes, there's got to be seasons that you fast also. So some of y'all were all on board and you're like, don't you talk about my food now. <laughs> just help you for just a minute. Look what he says, verse 16, when you fast. Notice he doesn't say if you fast. As Christians, there are moments that we are called to fast. Yes. There are moments we're called to go all in on this idea. He says, don't be som somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others why they're fasting. Like you ever heard those people that are walking around, they just look miserable and you're like, why are you so sad? I'm just giving God some time. Just fasting, haven't eaten in four hours. We're like, I think that's normal. <laughs> it's like, it's just always telling you. He says, he says, therefore I tell you, they've received their reward in full. Like if you're doing it to get the praises of everybody else, you've already got your reward. But when you fast, look what he says. He says, put oil on your head and wash your face. Like, like look like you've got, you're okay. He goes, so that you will not be obvious to others that you're fasting. But look what he says, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret, look what it does, he will reward you. Yes. In the same way, when we pray in secret, when we close that door, when we pray and connect with God, we get rewarded. When we take a season and fast, we get rewarded. I had the biggest problem with this for years because I go, what is the purpose of fasting? It doesn't make sense. I know the results of fasting, I showed it to you. Like every time I fast, it's crazy how much breakthrough I get in my life. But I don't know why. Like, why is it that God's telling his people all throughout the scriptures, like from the very beginning, remove food for a season, whether it's a day, a week, um, whether it's, it's a month. I mean, Jesus went 40 days. Like, why do we need to do this? 
And then I had a revelation this last week that I've never taught before, never understood before of why God's people are called to fast. And I'm gonna give it to you quick, but I'm telling you it's a game changer because now that you'll understand it, you'll be okay doing it because you'll realize why God's telling us to do it. Here's why we fast. The purpose of fasting is humility. It's humility. The greatest obstacle to answered prayers in your life is pride. And God will have nothing to do with pride. So the only way to remove pride in our life to set us up for breakthrough is through humility. How do we get humble? We get humble by fasting. That's why he said it in our passage. He says, when you fast, don't look all somber. Don't look, don't look all humble, like look at me. No, 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 he says, don't, don't look like it. He goes, I don't want you to fake it on the outside. I want you to experience it on the inside. Like, I want you to walk in true humility. And, and that, that, David did this in the Old Testament. Look what David said. He goes, I humbled myself with, with what? With what? Fasting. With fasting. He knew, it was, a, it was Jewish tradition that when God's people needed a breakthrough, the solution was that they got humble before God and the way they got humble was through fasting. We see it all throughout the Bible. We see it in the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, the most holy day in Jewish culture and Jewish religion. What was it? It was a Day of Atonement and during that Day of Atonement, they would take a day and they would fast and God would move. And it, we see it all throughout the scriptures. Fasting is what God's people do to walk in humility, to posture them for the breakthrough that God wants to do in your life. Because here's why, I want you to get this, because God won't humble you, you have to humble yourself. So good. <laughs> let, me, let me say it this way, okay? <laughs> um, you can either humble yourself or eventually you'll be humiliated. <laughs> That's why Jesus says, all of those who exalt themselves will be humbled, but those who humble themselves, like I'm making a decision to humble myself. That is why fasting is a beautiful thing because you know what you're doing? You're walking around, you deserve food. You deserve it, thank God. He created us to consume food, it's awesome. But what we're doing is when people say, go, why are you not eating this meal? Or why are you not um, eating these few weeks? Or what, what's the issue? And you're going, I just need God. I just need God. Well, really? Removing food? I don't know. I just got to humble myself. And I got to do my part to, to I, I, need, I need God in my life. John Wesley, who was the founder of the Methodist Church and a great revivalist, he wouldn't even let a minister of the Methodist Church be ordained if they didn't commit to fasting every Wednesday and every Friday. And I'm like, thank God I'm not Methodist. Come on, somebody. <laughs> He was just that serious about it. He said it this way, I am persuaded that if a Christian has understood the need to fast and does not practice fasting, he will backslide as surely as a Christian who understood the need to pray and does not pray. So what is fasting? Let me just tell it to you really quickly and we're almost done. Fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual purposes. So I'm all about like removing social media. I'm doing that this month. I'm all about like, you know, some of y'all pull back on the Netflix, that's great but I'm gonna challenge you on removing food for spiritual purposes with the idea that it's gonna humble you to position you for all that God has for you. So I'll be giving you some types of fasting. These are on our website too. There's obviously, there's juice and water. I did that one last year. That's tough. If you've never done that, that's a long time. Three weeks is a long time to only drink juice and some water. Um, so it's, it's a tough one to jump into. Liquids only is like where you basically put, you know, you have milkshakes or smoothies, but you, you basically are not chewing anything. Come on, I've seen people put entire meals in a blender. Come on, they're creative to God be the glory. That's funny right there. Um, Daniel fast is probably the most popular fast that's out there. You can Google it. It's, you're removing uh, fruits and, I mean, you're removing uh, uh, vegetables. You're only doing vegetables and fruits. Some of y'all like, I'll remove all vegetables this month. That's not fasting, all right. Uh, no meats and sweets. I've done that one probably the most out of all of them where you're just removing meats and sweets from your life. I'm going to challenge you. A very popular one is just people who say, I'm going to remove a meal a day. Maybe it's removing lunch or removing breakfast. Again, this isn't for your health's sake. This is for humility's sake. This is for just saying, I just need God. And then there's another one, no eating till sunset. Uh, that's a very popular one. It's probably one I'm going to do this year where you just the whole day, just go all, all day not eating and just take that time and seek God. Here's what happens when you fast. The Bible says God opposes the proud, but he gives favor to the humble. 
Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Notice he doesn't say, I'm going to humble you. He says, humble yourself. By the way, can I just give you this? I know I'm, I'm out of town. Listen to this. Um, it's a law of spiritual, it's a spiritual law that if you exalt yourself, you'll get humbled. Yep. Who is the first created being that exalted himself in pride? Did anybody remember? Lucifer. Lucifer. Very good, very good. Lucifer, remember? Created being exalted himself. And what happened? He got thrown down. Yep, yep. He got humbled. Who was the one that was exalted that humbled himself? Come on, help me. It's, it's the answer always at church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, everybody's like, I knew that one. <laughs> Jesus humbled himself and then was exalted. You want your life to be lifted up this year and exalted? Start with a season of humbling yourself. Humility matters. If you listen to this sermon and you go, there's no way, I'm just, I'm better than that. I either. We got too much pride. Amen. And pride, the Bible says, comes before the fall. The fall. It, pride always comes before the fall, but humility comes to those who get honored. John Bunyan says it this way. He that is down needs fear no fall. He that is low, no pride. He that is humble, ever shall have God be his guide. <laughs> you, you just get this, get this, get this. Get humble this year. Like stay low. I, I, I had a pastor tell me one time, he goes, a minister that is on his face can't fall from that position. <laughs> I, I'm just, uh, my goal this year is just humility, humility, humility. And I'm not going to walk around like the passage says and walk around and go, look how humble I am. <laughs> the most humble of all the pastors out there. <laughs> just, just in secret between me and God, I'm just going to get humble before God and watch how he'll exalt me. The promise, so, so the purpose is humility. The promise of fasting is breakthrough. It's breakthrough. It's shocking to me how when God's people will fast and humble themselves, breakthrough happens. We see it all throughout the scriptures. David fasted before he went to war. Moses fasted 40 days before, because of the sin of Israel. Ahab, who deserved to die, they'd all deserve to be killed, fasted and God relented. Nineveh fasted. Remember when Jonah preached to them? Nineveh fasted and God spared the city. People of God fasted when there was impending danger. Ezra fasted when they were seeking God for favor to return from the exile. Nehemiah fasted when they heard about the state of Jerusalem. The Jews fasted when they heard the decree against in Esther's time. And Esther and Mordecai fasted before they went before the king. Jesus fasted before he went into ministry. Paul fasted before making major decisions. The apostles fasted when people were in prison or when people were struggling. The early church fasted regularly and no wonder they grew and took over the world because fasting works. You humble yourself and watch how God will exalt you. The Bible says it this way, and I'll close with this. If my people who are called by my name, you wanna know the answer to America? It's not gonna happen in November. It's gonna happen right now because God's people are gonna humble themselves. But you go, Aaron, how do we humble ourselves? I'm glad you asked. You humble yourself through fasting. If we humble our, so, so look, it's four things that we do, three things that God responds with. We humble ourselves, that's fasting. Then we pray, that's connection with God. I just taught you about that. We seek his face, that's worship. That's what we're gonna do on Wednesday nights. And then we turn from our wicked ways, that's repentance. We do those four things this month. Then look what God does. When we fast, we pray, we worship, and we repent. Look what God does. He will hear us, he will forgive our sin, and he will heal our land. Can we just take a second and honor our God for the fact that he will come through for us. He will bring us breakthrough. That's what I'm believing for over your life and my life this year. So I know it's like a lot more of a teaching message. Next, next Sunday, it's, we're, we're gonna go through the Lord's Prayer. It's gonna be powerful, but I'm gonna do this for you today. I want you to take those sermon notes and I want you to write at the very bottom of there, what are you praying for in 2024? What do you need in your life in 2024? What's the breakthrough? Everybody write something because I'm about to have you all hold it up in just a second. 
What are you believing for? I'm really believing that there's children that are gonna come back to the faith. I'm believing there's gonna be healing over anxiety and depression. I, I'm just believing that cancer is gonna dis disappear. That this is a year of the miraculous as we humble ourselves before God. And now I want you to fill in that second one. What are you fasting from over these next 21 days? Maybe you're making your decision now. Maybe you're gonna make it in a few minutes or maybe even tonight as we start tomorrow morning, by the way. That's why we have donuts at every campus today. We're getting you all ready for the fast. No donuts the next three weeks. You ready? You got it? 15 more seconds, write it down. I know some of y'all are writing down what you're believing for. Oh, those needs, I see it, I know it. Oh, that we would humble ourselves before God. Thank you, Jesus. Take those sermon notes across all of our campuses and let's hold them up. And I want you to present that need to God as you're connecting with him. Oh man, oh God. Lord, you see the needs. You see the hurt and the pain. And this year, we will connect with you relationally in that time of prayer. And during those times of prayer, we're gonna present these needs to you because you're a God that genuinely cares. Lord, we wanna see heaven come to earth in these areas miracles to break out. Lord, prodigals to come back to you. Lord, for those who are, who are just wrapped with depression and worry, God, let freedom happen. Those who need a job and promotion, let this be the year as we humble ourselves before the Lord. Lord, we believe in due time, you will lift us up and you will bring a miracle in our life. And we trust you and we believe it and we consecrate ourselves these next 21 days to all that you're gonna do in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says? I said everybody that believes it says? Come on, can we give God a little bit of praise for it? Well, thank you so much for watching Radiant Church YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to this channel right now. You can click the button so you don't miss anything. You can support the ministry by sharing this message with a friend or by clicking the Give Now button that you see on your screen so that we can continue to see lives changed for Jesus. Thanks for watching. The best is yet to come.